Hey guys, I apologize in advance if I sound a bit sniffly and nasally. I think I'm starting to get sick, but um, let's battle on with this video regardless. So I hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like and also hit subscribe so that you can see future videos as well. So uh, just as last week, we had some pretty major news come out of the US and also some pretty scary headlines. Anything that says sort of 2008 in a headline tends to scare people in the kind of financial world and we had a few of those this week. So um, what we saw was the Federal Reserve over in the States cut interest rates for the first time since 2008 and immediately in the market we saw a little bit of a sell-off so we saw around a one percent kind of drop across some of the major indices uh, and i want to kind of talk through what a an interest rate cut actually means for the stock market what it means for the general economy as a whole and go through kind of some of the basics there and why the federal reserve actually moves around sort of interest rates in the first place so let's get into it so the simplest way to explain interest rates and why the Federal Reserve actually moves them up and down over time is they're basically like the sort of accelerator and brake pedal on a car in the economy and, and the growth of the economy. So lowering interest rates is like putting your foot on the gas for growth and rising interest rates, lifting those up, is like putting your foot on the brake for growing the economy. So typically when the Federal Reserve cuts interest rates like they've done um, just this past week, they're looking to do something to stimulate economic growth because interest rates have a lot of flow on effects to the lives of everyday people and also to the lives of big business um, and that sort of thing in sort of corporate America. So there's a lot of flow on effects of changing interest rates and I want to run through how those changes actually influence um, the performance of assets and the growth of the economy and that sort of thing. So um, just going into some of the basics, as soon as you cut interest rates, if anyone out there has um, some sort of variable rate loan, so whether that's a car loan or a mortgage or, or any sort of loan that has a variable interest rate, Basically, the payments on that will drop down if interest rates drop. And what that means for um, typical consumers is if they have a mortgage, if the everyday American has some sort of floating rate mortgage, um, obviously some of those interest rates are fixed, so it's not going to affect those people. But if they have some sort of variable rate uh, loan, when interest rates come down, they're not going to have to pay as much money to sort of service that debt and they're going to have more money left over to spend. And that's basically what um, the Federal Reserve is trying to get people to do. They're trying to get people to spend more money. If people spend more money at businesses, those businesses can become more profitable. They can employ more people and the more people you can employ, again, the more that stimulates spending within the economy. So that's a couple of the basic reasons why the Federal Reserve uh, will be lowering interest rates. And there are also similar effects on businesses. So if companies have a lot of debt, if companies also have some of these variable rate loans, um, essentially the repayments on those loans also become less strenuous for the businesses. So the businesses that are currently sort of publicly traded on the stock market, if they have a lot of debt, they won't have to repay as much of that debt with a lower interest rate. So it instantly makes them more profitable. It again allows them to employ more people, um, those people that get jobs, go out and spend more money, buy more products. And again, we get this economic growth sort of continuing on. So. That's sort of what happens from the spending side of the equation. There's a few interesting things that happen on the asset side of the equation with interest rates as well. So let's dive into that. We're um, obviously stock market investors or maybe property investors if you're um, watching this sort of video on YouTube. So let's get into sort of what happens there. Uh, essentially, typically when interest rates are dropped, the stock market and asset prices in general rise. So Warren Buffett often puts, puts it as interest rates are like gravity on the stock market. So the more interest there is, the more gravity there is on the stock market and kind of pulling it down. If we let some of that gravity off by lowering interest rates, the stock market often rises. And one of the reasons is some of the stuff I've spoken about already around um, you know, less debt servicing costs, being able to offer more jobs, stimulated sort of consumer spending from those lower interest rates, all that sort of stuff. Um, but there's a couple of fundamental sort of things that change with the attractiveness of investments in the stock market and property investments with lower interest rates. So um, let's take the stock market first. So if you're going to 
put money into some sort of investment, whether that's the stock market or the typical alternative is something like bonds and sort of fixed interest investments. Basically, when interest rates go down, those bonds become lower yielding instrument. So depending on the length of the bond or the treasury bill that you're uh, investing in over in the States, you're probably only getting like a two to 3% yield somewhere in that range. And that's barely the rate of inflation. So it makes those bonds not very attractive from an investment standpoint. And the lower that those interest rates get, the lower those bond yields are gonna get and the less attractive those bonds start to look. So what that means for the stock market is that people tend to pull that money out of bonds the lower the interest rates go and they tend to stick that money into the stock market. So the stock market instantly becomes more attractive. You know, if I can get only two or two and a half percent from a bond, but I can get maybe five or six or seven or eight percent in the stock market, there's much more incentive to shift that capital over to the stock market um, and invest it there. And the other thing that improves the sort of valuations in stocks is typically when you run some sort of discounted cash flow or some sort of valuation on a business in the stock market, you use um, typically something like the 10 year bond or the 10 year treasury yield as a discount rate in that, in that um, equation. And if you don't know what that means, basically the discount rate is essentially what sort of return you wanna make for that on that investment. So if you want to uh, make a higher return, basically you're not gonna be able to pay as much upfront for that asset. So um, if you were gonna sell a home, for example, at $400,000 you think in the future, if you wanna make a really big return, you might only pay $100,000 for that house. If you're comfortable with a lower return, you might pay $350,000 for that, for that house up front. That's basically the type of equation that's going on in the stock market here. And when your alternatives are lower yielding, you're going to be more willing to pay that $350,000 um, you know, when you've got less alternatives from lower interest rate bonds. So that's what makes the stock market more attractive. It's a similar sort of principle with property, but there's a couple of other factors at play there. So Typically what happens when you go and buy an investment property um, is you're looking at what sort of cash you can get in the door through rent and you're looking at what your expenses are going to be. So a lot of those are going to be fixed. Um, they're going to be things like your rates, your um, property taxes over in the States, um, maybe a little bit budgeted in there for repairs and maintenance and that sort of thing. Um, but the main expense oftentimes is debt service. So with rental properties, it's obviously very common to use debt to invest and to get into that property with uh, sort of without paying 100% cash for that property. Um, so essentially, the lower your interest rate is, the more you can afford to pay for that property and still get the same return. So if interest rates are through the roof, if interest rates are like 20%, you're obviously going to have a lot of debt servicing and a lot of costs associated with paying that loan. If your interest rate is only four or 5%, there's gonna be much fewer costs associated with that. So if rent stays the same and, and those interest rates and mortgage payments drop down, you're going to be able to pay a lot more for the house than you would with that um, higher interest rate. So typically property prices continue to go up and up and up as those interest rates go down and vice versa, if interest rates go up, that starts to pull back the property sort of market a little bit as well. So that's a couple of things around asset prices and that's basically why the Federal Reserve has started to pull back interest rates. Typically as a business cycle goes on, you'll see those interest rates actually rise and rise and rise over time to try and cap economic growth and stop things going into kind of bubble territory. Um, this time around, growth around the world is, is slowing and you're seeing the Federal Reserve try and take action around that. So um, that's some of the basics. The last thing I wanna dive into is some of the concerns from economists and that sort of thing around these very low interest rates and some things that could really um, I guess push the states into a lot of trouble. So let's spend a couple of minutes on that and then I'll leave you today. So there are really two or three sort of major downsides to lowering interest rate and risks that come along with that. So um, the first one is we have to feel for those in retirement, we have to feel for those on uh, sort of fixed interest investments, people that don't want to take a lot of risk and don't want to invest in the stock market. You know, they're not people like me in their 20s that are, are willing to take a little bit more risk. They're the people in their 
60s, 70s, 80s that get fixed interest every year. They're living on some sort of principle that they've built up over time. Um, you've got to feel for those people. So um, over the last, um, you know, a long period of time now, 10 years or so, interest rates have been extremely low and the yield that those people are getting on their principal is very low. So it's forcing them into the stock market, like I said, and the lower those interest rates get, the more sort of dire the situation gets for those people on, on fixed interest um on fixed interest investments and that's really challenging so that's the first one the second one is it does have some effects on the dollar so the us dollar is likely to become weaker now that interest rates are lower uh, what that means for businesses is anyone that is a net exporter will do very well um, people can pay more for those products um, if the US dollar is weaker for importers uh, it's basically the opposite if you're importing product into the US and you're working with US dollars your dollar is less powerful it doesn't have as much spending power when you want to buy in goods from overseas whether that be from China or from some other place um, so that is basically the extent of that with the US dollar the really third major thing that is concerning a lot of people now is this concern that the US Federal Reserve are starting to sort of lose control and lose power on this kind of economic engine. And basically that's because interest rates are so low, they don't have a lot of room to lower it further. So typically when some sort of, typically when the US gets into some sort of recession, so like they did in uh, the early 2000s or like they did around 2008, the Federal Reserve may have interest rates around five, uh, roughly 5%, maybe even higher, maybe a little bit lower, but roughly around that 5% figure. And that means that when growth does slow or growth goes negative in a recession situation, they have a lot of room to really drop those interest rates aggressively and get things moving again. Um, in the 80s, we saw interest rates get up to like 15 or 20% with crazy inflation and all sorts of things. The Fed was really trying to work to cap that economic growth that was just going nuts um, and that gave them a lot of room for when growth did start to slow down and we did get into recession territory to pull those interest rates down they had lots of room to pull them down and get this growth engine sort of started again um, when we're working with like a two percent interest rate <laughs> there's there's not much room to pull interest rates down further and not much room to kind of get things moving again if we do have a recession so that's scary for a lot of people out there. Um, it concerns a lot of people. I have no idea whether that is is um, going to turn out to have a big influence if we do go into a recession. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see what, what sort of happens there. But it is a little bit scary, and it's one of those things that you'll definitely want to um, keep an eye on and get your head around so that you sort of know what's going on with the basics of interest rates there. So that's my thoughts on interest rates. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely hit like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.